Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Cryptids and Monsters video. Alright, let's go ahead and we'll do another Cryptids of the Week. Again, emphasizing whatever the random page on the cryptids.wikia.com presents, and that way I'll talk about it here. This time, the random page landed on a pretty mysterious cryptid of some sort. In actuality, I don't know if you can necessarily call it a cryptid. Um, it just basically seems to be a larger version of a well-beloved uh, pet that we all have, that most of us at least have in this world. And so whether it's truly a cryptid or not, it's up to you. But in this case, it's called the Nayarit Ruffed Cat. And the reason why I said earlier that it's um, kind of hard to describe it as a cryptid is all it is is it's your average household cat but it seems to be supersized, like much, much larger than the beautiful household cats that you and I both know. Um, and for example, my cat, Tum Tum, obviously uh, she's regular sized cat. Every other person that has a cat as a pet is also regular sized. Sometimes there are claims or even photos, uh, whether they're real or not, they look real, of people on the interwebs where they're holding up cats and they seem to be much larger than your average household cat. Maybe like two times larger in other words. Some of them are really big and long others are just bloated from fats but still looking very cute but um, those are the probably the rare the, the 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 extent that these things go this one though the Nayarit the Rufford cat if the claims are to be believed it's found in Nayarit Mexico hence the reason for its name and it purportedly is anywhere from four feet up to about seven feet in length so it is a giant cat a humongous cat probably the kind of cat that would easily dwell uh, within um, olden times when animals seemed to be larger back then um, it would be the same size essentially as a lion but in this case it is a household cat for all intents and purposes and this is why um, it's you're looking at a picture of it here of what it would be a representation um, it would look like your average household cat it would have the signature uh, longer hair uh, that cats have it has the same face that a cat has in other words it doesn't have the elongated snout that lions would have or that cougars would have or that pumas would have um, instead it would have the same everything just happens to be much much larger um, on top of that it seems to have a tail of some sort that seems to actually be shorter I, there are some of the information I found seems to call it like a stub of a tail of some sort and then its claws are bright yellow and they retract almost like the claws of the larger cats around like the pumas and the cougars that I was mentioning earlier um, but that's about it no real other representation that differentiating it from a household cat other than its much larger size um, as far as let's say the two um, pieces of evidence that that actually go towards its existence they were found but unfortunately they were lost so alas right now there's no video there's no photos there's nothing else like any kind of other scientific proof there were these two items that I was just mentioning that were found sometime in 1940 there was a cryptozoologist um, he's no longer around now but his name was Ivan Sanderson which you're looking at a picture of here he was purported to have purchased two skins of this cat. He bought them in a mountain village there in Nayarit State in New Mexico. Um, I'm sorry, Mexico. Um, I think I was saying New Mexico. My apologies. It's Mexico altogether. Um, so he had this particular set of skins and he bought them and they were supposed to reflect the true size of the gigantic cat itself um, but alas he he lost them in a flood. I believe that flood the date shows it was um, sometime in August 19th 1955 um, the way the story goes his home was flooded out during the floods caused by a hurricane called Hurricane Diane and so once that happened then that was it he lost the physical evidence of this cat itself and that's that's the only known evidence nobody else seems to have um, these these particular uh, skins or whatever the fur is of this particular cat the closest reported was he himself, Ivan Sanderson again, 
stated that somewhere along his travels, he went to a place called Colima, or Colima, of that very same year, back in 1940, and he saw another merchant selling a very similar sized set of skin, i.e. the same thing from this cat, the Nayarit Ruffit cat. So where that merchant is now, and where the status of that skin was, who knows. We're talking about something that occurred decades ago. So if anyone else has it out there, um, and they just either have possession of it or are still selling it, it's it's somewhere in this world, and it's just ready to be available so, uh, to be sold sometime soon, or ready to be able to be collected sometime soon. But that's it. That's all the information that I have on the Nayarit Ruffid cat. Um, it's kind of crazy when you think about it, um, because like myself as a as a as an owner of a beautiful cat, and then those of you in my viewing audience as um, owners of cats too, you know that they are beautiful animals, uh, perfect household pets, not only because of their size. I mean, they're the size that they are, and cats traditionally don't get much larger. They're not in those varied sizes like dogs that can go from little tiny, like almost rodents, to gigantic uh, pit bulls or danes of some sort. But if cats were larger, like let's say if they were going into the three four maybe even five feet range that all of a sudden they would not be pets at all in fact they would be predators because of their perfect hunting skills uh the way that they can bite the way that they can scratch the way that they can jump um and then not only that but their perfect blending with environments and then being able to take on rough extremes uh, very easily handling very cold weather up to very hot weather i think i read somewhere that to, to a cat, anything above uh, 100 degrees up to 120 degrees is is like summertime for them. That, that's it's nothing that can harm harm them. Um, then all of a sudden, these cats would be something else completely different. But for the fact that they're tiny or much tinier than the, than let's say the United Ruffed cat, then we're dealing with household pets. But if they were much larger, it would be a whole different story. So fascinating stuff when you think about it. So. All right, everybody. Thanks again, as always. And if anyone has any more info on this mysterious cat, um, any more experiences, any other places that people have reported to see it, um, I would be definitely glad to hear. So post those comments below. Thank you so much. So. All right, everybody. Thanks again, as always. Take care.